too. I didn't know it was way. Is that you drawing on the board there? That was not my drawing. for boards to be raised pre-pandemic. <laughs> they finally got around to it. I don't know how the assassin's going to like that, but what for me. <laughs> we can get a school. We should have just, <laughs> we should have just raised it. We could have. <laughs> yeah, well, if that's that thought did occur to me. All right. That is cool. It just feels strange. <laughs> it does look really The whole really place is out of it. It does look a lot higher than I would have thought they would have done. It looks really high. Yeah, they, they maxed it out. <laughs> oh, 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 there's one more. <laughs> there's one, okay. They didn't want to go too far. Yeah, they didn't want to go all right. Be sensible. At least it's not seven feet tall. So, since all of this is being recorded, um, <laughs> are there any questions? Yeah, Master Set 30, uh, number four. Um, all right, I'm gonna pause you right there. I'm just gonna let this stuff record. I'm gonna go grab something from my office because it's always one more thing. And that way, I'm not looking at someone else's paper. I wonder if he's gonna edit that out or not. Or does it just stay in the video? Yeah. 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 Was that a first problem when we the dots? Oh, yeah. Like when we put four dots in the corners? Is there actual current flow in that one, or no? I don't know. Because I know there was current flow. <laughs> and be like, like, you can just be like, hey, can you want to like the rest of them? And be like, hey, can you mm -hmm. see the dots? How many more weeks do we have? What? How many more weeks do we have? Like at the first class? Yeah. Like, no. no, it's three. <laughs> Are you serious? It's like another four. Three. It's three. Is three including this week? No, this is, so this is four, then three, two, one. Oh, okay. All right, so problem 30, number four. Yes, sir. All right, six millimeter diameter wires carrying the current. Uniform density, what's the magnitude of that line integral and the strength of the magnetic field, okay? What's the, is there um, a more specific question or just in general? I think it would just be, I think my question will be, answered if just the whole question because um, I know it's flux so I just didn't know how to treat it if it's um, inside the diameter of the wire or outside of the wire but I think just the whole question okay first of all it's not flux uh, magnetic flux would be a, a an integral with respect to the area not s is a length so we're doing a line integral What's the word of mine on the screen? Somewhere around there. All right. So, the integral of B dot, I usually use DL in class. They're using D, or for some reason I used S at that point in my life, uh, is equal to mu naught times I inside. So, I do some line. So, if I have a wire right here and I do a line integral, because of symmetry, I expect the magnetic field to be the same everywhere above here. And so B times 2 pi r, which is the length of the line, since I'm assuming B is relatively constant, or the magnitude is constant, and DL is in the direction of that I'm moving in. that the dot product is just multiplying B times DL. B is constant everywhere along here, the magnitude is, so that comes out. And so now I'm doing a line integral of a circle, which is just the circumference. And that's equal to mu naught times the current that is inside. 
So if my circle is outside, then it's just u naught times that current. If I'm inside the wire, if I have a uniform current density, so I have a radius of the wire, and then I have the radius of my loop. I still, from a, symmetric, so from a symmetry point of view, I expect the magnetic field strength to be the same everywhere along, along this line. So it's a matter of what is that current. Well, if my current density is constant, then and current density is current divided by the area. And I would expect that for the whole thing, the same ratio is for the small circle. So for the whole thing, it's uh, I, let's write down total, over 2 over pi r squared. And that's going to be equal to the I that's enclosed here divided by pi little r squared. So that's for um, when you're measuring the, when you're trying to follow these values for outside of the diameter of the wire. Uh, if you're outside the diameter of the wire, it's just a simple B times two by R is equal to U naught. Oh, okay. So that's for, so the, uh, the second part you wrote was for inside the wire. Yes, this is inside the wire. Oh wait, so B times two pi r is equal to mu naught over equals times curve? Yeah. All right, so the, the, there are two parts to the question. One is what is this line integral equal to, and it's going to be equal to uh, that. The second part is what is B equal to? Two pi r. And so, well, that's going to be equal to B times two pi times whatever, however far you are from the center. So you just solve for B. And then R, there are four different radii. Um, so the question asks, uh, what's B dot BS? Um, so if it's for the, if you're doing all these values for outside of the wire, that's gonna be the same every time? Yep. Okay. And then um, for B dot DS on the inside, I had that as zero. Is that, is that no. correct? No. How do you calculate that for the inside? That, that's what this was. Okay. So if my wire is this big and my current density is constant, and did I actually state that? Uniform current density stated in the problem. So the ratio of the entire current over the, divided by the entire area equals the current that's in this restricted area divided by the area of the restricted area. Uh, what's the formula we're supposed to use once we find the current density? Well, what I want to know here is mm -hmm. that Ampere's law is this I in is the current that's inside my, my loop here that I'm calculating. Mm -hmm. So, since the uniform current density, well, basically, since this is true, again, ratio of total current to total area is equal to the current within some loop of radius R divided by the area of that loop. So you solve for I in, and plug that into there. Apparently that was not uh, sufficient for you. Well, you want to re-ask the question? Well, because surface charge density isn't given, right? I, all I said was that it was uniform. Mm -hmm. I gave you the total current. 
and I gave you the diameter of the wire, from which you can pull the radius. Um, so you have enough information to figure that ratio out. In the cases where the radius, uh, the distance from the center is less than the radius of the wire, this is going to be the current that's enclosed in that loop. Does that work for you or you're still, I'm not answering your question. I'm still confused. Okay. I will just make up numbers here. I have a wire. If this is true to scale, it's a very thick wire. That's a big one. That's a massive wire. The radius of, we'll say seven centimeters, or 0.01 meters. If I want to know the magnetic field here at a distance of 20 centimeters, or 0.2 meters, I'm going to use Ampere's law. Oh, I need to give a current here. So we have a current's coming outwards, and we'll say that is a wire that big can handle more current than usual. So we'll make it five amperes. Side, the Tesla chargers are going to be once they start making planes. It's going to be a big old cable like that. Oh, oh. That's all I'm saying. They're not going to make electric planes. They're not, but if they were, how big would the cable have to be? No. Well, anyway, that's nice. for you future electrical engineers to figure out. All right, so if I want to figure out the magnetic field here, I'm using Ampere's law. I got some nice cylindrical symmetry here. So I know that the integral of B dot DL or DS, I'm going to, I guess I may as well use DS since that's what I have in the problem, is equal to mu naught times the current that's inside that loop. So I'm creating a, an Ampereum loop or a Gaussian loop, whichever way you want to go. All along here. This loop does not really exist. I'm just, it's, that's, the idea of a Gaussian surface or an Ampereum loop, these are just imagined. And I'm going to do a line integral of B dot DS all along here. Well, first off, which way is the magnetic field going to be going along the circle? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. All right, because the current's coming this way, magnetic field is going around that way. Wait, when did you state which way the current was going? Uh, that, that's what that dot right there was representing. What would it be if it was going the other way? It's, it's an X, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So dot is out and X is uh, in. So right. Like that. If an error is coming at you, you see the point. Oh, that makes sense. Because of symmetry, I would, there's no reason for the magnetic field strength here to be any different than the field strength here. Because of symmetry, the magnetic field strength is, I'm assuming, the same. So if I do my line integral, going around this way, that should be equal to, amperes, right, to a constant times the current that's coming out. So the integral of b dot ds is going to be equal to 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7 tesla meters per, I always have to think through this every time. Well, I know in the end I'm going to end up with tesla meters. Yeah, so that's right, tesla meters per ampere times five amperes.
So about eight times ten to the negative six ish. I just did that negative six in there. Like How did I do what? So I was writing down the, the X and the the circle. Oh, okay. This is Ampere's law. Right there. This is Ampere's law. Okay. Oh, I see what I see what you're saying. I did a pseudo derivation of it, I think, on one of the Zoom calls. And there's a video where I did the pseudo derivation of it. I don't think I did the formal derivation of Ampere's law on the video yet. So is use of not a constant or no? Yes, that is the permeability of free space. That's four pi times 10 to the negative seven decimal meters per ampere. Oh, I see. That, this right here, that's use of not. Okay, so it, it's like, it's a given number. Yes, it's like permittivity of, permittivity of free space is 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12. And that's epsilon sub so not, right? Yes. Okay, that, okay, I was going to say, so this is permeability? Yes. Okay. Permittivity comes in when you're dealing with electric field. Permeability comes in when you're dealing with magnetic field. Actually, do the calculation. Yeah. What was it? Um, I got six point two eight three times ten to the negative sixth tesla meter tesla meters. So that is the line integral, which was the first part of what I was asking for. The second part is what's the magnetic field? Well, I know that b dot ds. Oops, lost my vector symbol there. If the magnetic field strength is the same, then I really all I care about is the direction here. If the direction of my magnetic field is counterclockwise, I'm doing my line integral counterclockwise. And so those are in the same direction because ds is moving along the circle here. So this line integral is, uh, Basically, B, yes. This is a line integral of a circle. In other words, it's the circumference of a circle. So B times 2 pi r is equal to that. And so that's B times 2 pi times 0.2 all for B. And that's the magnetic field strength, which I believe was the second thing I wanted you to find. Oh, okay. So B is magnetic field strength? Yes. B with a vector symbol is magnetic field, and then if you throw the word strength after it, we're talking magnitude. Okay. And then sub 2 pi and sub 2.2. Oh, oh, if you're doing that one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah or right. however you want to do it. I mean, you, or you could go back to here, divide both sides by 2 pi, get rid of that pi. Oh, yeah, I would too. <laughs> I see. If you're using a calculator, I'm not quite sure it really matters which one way or the other. And all of that is just for one of, on the outside, right? Yes. Yeah, we do one on the inside. And what? What's DS? DS is basically S for uh, position. DS would be sort of displacement as we go along our line. DS is an infinitesimal line segment along my circle here. Oh, along the circle, okay. Yeah. Unlike flux, this is a line integral and not an area integral. Or surface integral, probably better wording. So we have, and 
I'm going to guess there's no way I'm going to hear Jacob if he actually speaks. So I'm bringing chat up, Jacob, uh, just in case you type something in, hopefully you'll see it. first day of 251. There were a couple different letters that are used for position. X, Y, and Z are often used. S and R are the other two common ones. S coming from the Latin word stadia. Stadia? S-T-A-D-I-A. -A. I'm assuming stadiums originally, that was the size, basically the perimeter. But that's where Google got the name for their thing. 100%. It's both the same. You're saying it's a circle? Yeah, or circle or ellipse. That the inner perimeter, I assume, was a one stadia. Okay. I, the, it just clicked in my head because Google has that screen on that game streaming stuff. It's called Google Sadia. Oh, okay. But I'm guessing it's pronounced a via, but the Americans just decided it's Sadia. <laughs> Did that thing get shut down? Yeah. I oh, we got a nod up here. Oh, I guess it did then. <laughs> Why? And it, was, it probably sucked, honestly. <laughs> I remember they couldn't even cover their expenses. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. Plus, we got no class by it, the Xbox stream was there. All right. But so let's do one on the inside. Are any other questions before we tackle what's on the inside there? Oh, did you want the answer for B? Or are we passed up? Sorry? Did you want the answer for B? Or oh, yeah. Up? So therefore, B equals 4.99 times 10 to the negative 6. Tesla? Oh, wait. It can't be Tesla meters, can it? No. Wouldn't it just be Tesla? It would be just Tesla. Yeah, because it can't be meters because that's the S. Right? And this 